Well, welcome to Clean Edwell on a rather wet Monday in February. Uh, I've had this hood up and down like a flipping yo-yo. It's one minute it's raining, next minute it's uh, it's clear. So um, I say it's a Monday, so I made a quick dart out. Uh, can't be home to make uh, uh, some haggis for my daughter for tea uh, for coming home from school. So I uh, thought I'd have a, a quick dart out to Clean Edwell and a quick uh, kind of cant around the uh, the lake but I also thought I'd come and try a different technique so I read a piece uh, a couple of weeks ago now uh, by quite a famous kind of well, a world famous landscape photographer who was extolling the virtue of um, uh, using aperture priority for landscape work um, now if you've watched any of my films or kind of you know uh, any of my landscape work. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera, but uh, we've got mine with fussy. You'll know that I kind of obsess a little bit about uh, getting your camera into manual. And in fact, kind of my workshops, yes, I run workshops. Have a check, I'll put a link below to my website for kind of workshops. Um, I extol the virtues of kind of uh, using manual settings on your camera. So you have full control over kind of aperture, shutter speed, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but this photographer was talking about using aperture priority and letting the camera do the hard work uh, and a couple of other things. When I get to a spot, I'll, I'll talk through the detail. But I think in photography, it's always about learning. There's always an opportunity to learn. Now, I, 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 I do think kind of manual settings are kind of work for me, but uh, I'm not going to use them today. I'm going to follow this other technique and uh, see how the results differ from what I'd normally do. Uh, see if it's a kind of different discipline. See if it's quicker. Uh, see if the creative process is different. So stay tuned. And I'm just heading around the top end of the lake, so maybe get a view back. Oh, there's a bit of blue sky over there. So let's see how it goes and uh, keep you posted. One of the things I really like about uh, Clean Edwell is 20 minutes from the car, half an hour, depending on how quickly you walk. Uh, you can be at the top end of the lake uh, with great kind of uh, composition looking across the penny at Olwen. Now, kind of today isn't the perfect condition, it's kind of incredibly cloudy. That bit of blue sky seems to be hanging around the end of the valley a bit. But uh, you know, you've got these, these rocks at the top of the lake um, and a great kind of leading line, kind of these rocks, these trees leads to the lake and then up to the kind of glorious penny it all went. So I've set up and as I said, I'm using kind of technique recommended by the as I say, internationally acclaimed landscape photographer. Um, so what I would normally do, so I'll t just turn the camera off. What I would normally do is I'd set up my camera, find my composition. So I'd, I'd look through the eyepiece. So when I'm composing, I look through the eyepiece. Um, but when I'm then taking the image, I use kind of live view. I think looking through the eyepiece um, just helps focus your mind. Um, so you're, you know, you're only seeing essentially um, kind of through the eyepiece. So everything else is uh, kind of uh, ruled out. Whereas when you're looking at the uh, live view screen, there's lots of distractions. So I'd, I'd set up my composition. In this case, looking along this rock, through these trees, down the lake, uh, to the mountain. Uh, then I'd what I'd kind of look at the scene and the light in the scene. Uh, I'd be on manual, as I've mentioned countless times. Uh, I'd take a point, uh, uh, a, a uh, kind of a light reading point. Uh, so I'd meet, uh, in, in this circumstance, it's a bit gloomy, but uh, I'd probably meet uh, off uh, the lake. Um, I'd focus, depending, so I, 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 uh, I, in fact, I think I was exactly here when I made a film about three different ways of uh, getting good focus so in this circumstance i'd probably use hyperfocal distance because want this rock uh it, it sharp uh, and the rest of the scene sharp um i take my light reading as I, as I mentioned drop in the filter make the necessary adjustments to get what i think would be a uh, a nice exposure and composition uh, and then take the image but this new technique set my camera on aperture priority av um it's called different things in, in other cameras, but Canon, it's uh, AV. So you set the aperture and the technique is you set your aperture at 
kind of what you think is, is sensible. So in this case, F11, you focus uh, a third of the way into the scene, which is probably that kind of bit of land sticking out in the lake. Um, uh, you're on evaluative uh, metering mode. Use a filter if, you, if you, you need to, and then just take the image and you let the camera do the rest of the work. So you let the camera choose the shutter speed uh, and, and, and that's it. So it's quite a simple process. You just aperture, third of the scene focus, off you go. Um, so uh, I, as you can probably see from the camera, I've gone for a uh, kind of a, a vertical or a portrait uh, composition. And um, I'm just looking across the scene. Um, so hang on, let me get rid of, I don't know if you can see all this. So I'm just looking across the scene. It's actually quite a nice scene. I've got these rocks in the foreground, about on the rule of thirds, penny roll wens on the rule of thirds, uh, and looking straight down the scene. And I reckon about a third of the way into the scene is probably kind of top end of the lake, uh, kind of a little bit. So um, I'm on F11 and I'm gonna let the camera do the work. Uh, although, the other thing that was recommended is exposed to the right. So I'll just bring up the histogram. <laughs> now this is gonna be a little bit of a, of a, of a challenge because when the camera's uh, in portrait mode, the histogram so sideways. Um, but the histogram, as you can see at the moment, is quite flat, was a little bit to the right. So I'm just going to go a bit more to the right, essentially overexposing the image. How, how far should I go? Probably there bit of trial and error because this isn't a usual technique um, uh, and that's the image captured let's have a look what that uh... yeah so the sky's quite heavily overexposed uh, so might need to work on that in um, in post-processing but that's the technique really really simple um, I'm gonna kind of reserve judgment until I've maybe taken a, a, a few more so it's quick and easy. Um, the little doubt in my mind is when you're relying on the camera uh, to kind of do the work for you. Uh, it, you know, cameras are very sophisticated. I, I, maybe it's because I'm a control freak. I like the sense of when you're in manual, you're controlling everything yourself. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Um, who am I to judge? It's not, there's no right or wrong. It all depends on what the image is like when it comes out. So if the image is good, that's what matters. Well, I've come down the hill a little bit. I was just up on, on that rock here, and this is the kind of tree I was talking about. Um, battling a little bit with the elements because rain keeps falling onto the, uh, uh, onto the filter and the lens, which is always kind of a bit of a pain. But uh, anyway, it's kind of Wales in February, you should expect some rain. Um, but I've come to look at a different composition. So I've got a landscape and I'm working on these rocks leading the eye into that tree, uh, which I wonder kind of if these trees and they must have a really hard life. So I can imagine they're really old because um, they must grow quite slowly, tough conditions. Um, but uh, so I've, I've got a, a, a landscape composition, a composition this time, uh, and I'm just going to use the same technique. So um, I, uh, kinda, I've got the setup. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. We've got the setup with these rocks leading in. It's a kind of fairly standard process. Um, just looking at my, uh, so I've pre-focused uh, kind of in about a third of the way into the scene and just looking at the um, histogram which is exposed to the right now I think you can over rely on the, the histogram a bit too much so that's probably you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I think I might be a bit old school so I'm going to take that like that and, and pay attention to the histogram um, but I think I might be a little bit old school um, in that kind of one of the challenges with the histogram is the histogram isn't showing you an interpretation of the raw image that you'll end up with. So what the camera does is it kind of creates a JPEG version of the image you're looking at and then bases the histogram on that. So the histogram is based on a JPEG image, not a raw image. So when you look at the, the histogram, it actually clips off, uh, kind of the diagram clips off the end of what's actually available in the dynamic range on, the, on this camera. So uh, I, 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 there's a lot of rain falling over there. Um, uh, I am a little bit old school because I, I, I use the histogram as a hint, but I'd rather kind of work on my eye and what I'm seeing in the scene. So um, 
you know, maybe histograms have got better over time, but uh, I still like to kind of trust my gut feel, if that makes sense. But I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to trust the histogram and uh, see how it goes. I'm going to take an image now, actually, because there's kind of quite moody um, uh, kind of rain falling in the sky. Now, there's a classic example. If I was doing this on manual, uh, I'd probably meter for um, uh, the kind of brightness in, in the sky and, and uh, go for a moody image. But with this simplified version, I guess I can just kind of look at the, uh, the, the, the back of the camera and, and just alter the uh, uh, kind of the, the exposure compensation. So I'm going to drop down because I want that to be, sorry, I didn't, my, <laughs> no, I don't want that, do I? Sorry, it, it, it's, it's touchscreen. I always, I always forget the, the LED on this is touchscreen, so I'm, I'm constantly kind of just touching um, stuff. So I'm just going to look at the image. My eye, I'm going to go darker and darker because I want the moodiness uh, in that corner, that top right-hand corner. So I'm probably cheating on that technique, but there we go. Um, don't tell anyone, I think I just cheated. But anyway, I suppose... <laughs> I suppose the um, kind of the view is there's no hard hard and fast rules, so make what works for you. Um, that blue sky is getting a little bit closer. I'm wondering whether I might get a little bit of light, but I've got to get home and do the haggis. <laughs> so I might uh, kind of start heading back down the other side of the lake and then look back in this direction. So stay tuned. The blue sky finally moved. Well, kind of moved. <laughs> there's still... Um, Kind of big swathe of blue sky over there but it's just broken up a little bit and the wind seems to have picked up so getting some interesting light coming along so uh, for those i'll try and turn my back to the wind um for those of you who know the area you probably spotted that i'm just kind of uh below uh the lake clear nidwell so the, the lake just sits uh, up there and the reason i stopped here is i liked this path uh kind of the 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 path kind of snakes up towards the lake you can't actually see the lake but then points up towards kind of the uh, uh the, the mountains and then the sweep of uh, uh devil's kitchen and occasionally when the sun comes out um it's lighting up this path um so you're getting a nice kind of sheen watery sheen at the moment it's it's, it's a bit grim <laughs> but um what i'm hoping is get a little bit of light come out shine on the path uh, and then I'm using kind of the path as a leading line. So I've got the path coming in the bottom right. And it sweeps through the rule of thirds there and heads up. And then I've got the kind of mountains on the rule of thirds. So it's a, I, I kind of like the composition. Um, but I'm using the kind of recommended technique uh, again of uh, I'm on F11. I'm in aperture mode. So uh, kind of letting the camera do the rest of the work. Although playing a little bit with a bit of... Um, uh, exposure compensation and I was actually thinking about this when I kind of came down so I can see the benefits of the technique um, and I can see how it's kind of useful but um, maybe I'm just old school but I still like having it in manual and having total control because I was thinking about kind of an analogy um, and I think of it a little bit like a seesaw so if I'm, if I'm in um, manual mode if I kind of open or close the aperture a bit, I can compensate with the shutter speed. So push one down, push the other up and, and, and vice versa uh, and use that to be a bit creative. Um, I think this method um, uh, with having uh, aperture priority, uh, you, you can adjust exposure compensation to kind of get the same effect. But for me, it doesn't seem like the same. Um, you don't have the same amount of control um, that's also probably because I've been using manual method for kind of donkey's years. Um, but, it, you know, it's always useful to learn from other people. And certainly, uh, you know, I can see when I was coming down, it started to hail a lot. Um, and it, it would be a method where if you wanted to get a quick shot, uh, set the camera up, uh, aperture priority, get your focus, take your images, and you can kind of be away. Where if you've got a bit more time, uh, I think, I'll stick to kind of the manual process, but this gave me an, an, an analogy. Um, I found this. So someone's clearly um, bought a cup of tea uh, down in the cafe near the car park. Uh, I got up here and just 
kind of chucked it on the side. Uh, I'll take that back. It really annoys me. But it gave me an analogy uh, of kind of the manual method and the uh, aperture method. Um, it's a bit like making a cup of tea. There isn't a perfect way. Uh, some people have a cup and they stick a bag in and kind of hot water, Bob's your uncle. Some people have leaves, put it in a pot, swirl it around, take their time. Um, what matters, not the technique, is at the end you have a nice cup of tea. <laughs> so what matters here is not the technique, it's at the end you've got an image that you're happy with. So I'll, I'll probably use it every now and then. I'll stick with manual, but the most important thing is the end product. So hopefully you find that useful. I'm just looking at the clouds and moving across a bit. Um, might defeat me though, because I've got to get that haggis done. <laughs> so um, hope you enjoyed that. There's Penny it all went. Hope you enjoyed it. Always useful to try. And uh, let me know what you think. Well, do you use Aperture Priority or do you use Manual or something else? Be interested to hear what you do. And uh, I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye.